Well, good day, folks. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we'll give you a little introduction around this little work site and why we're down here, but uh, it's a lovely day in the woodlot, and I was thinking as I was driving up here that uh, Mother Nature kind of fools you in that she makes it nice and warm so that you kind of feel like, you know, showing some skin and within 24 hours there'd be little insects coming around making you wish you didn't expose your skin. <laughs> Anyhow, I, it just feels like we're 24 hours away from having black flies. From bug season? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't recall it being this nice and, and not having those little critters. But anyhow, uh, we'll just give you a quick tour. Uh, this, of course, is uh, one half of the large white uh, birch uh, coming down for firewood and for some, uh, of course, it's not a well-suited tree for climate change. And we'll be giving some space around here to some future oak, oak reproduction. So just a quick tour. So as Debbie may have shown you, we have three oak saplings in this area. And I call them saplings because they're probably not much more than 20 foot tall and uh, no more than four inches in diameter. But I suspect that they have been quite badly suppressed and maybe older than what one would guess. So I came in here a couple of years ago, oh geez, maybe more than a couple say five or six years ago and did some partial work here to, to free up some of the some of the oak. And then I decided that I would come back in and really give them the room they need to grow for hopefully the rest of their lives. Uh, so yesterday I cut down that interesting uh, fur. This was, this was literally a corkscrew tree. He actually wove himself each around. And so the stump... If you can find it. They had two separate stumps, but they were actually, again, woven. Anyhow, he was kind of hanging over the uh, oak, and so he was the last of the trees for freeing up the oak. They're now, I think, totally done for as long as I can foresee. And uh, hopefully they'll do well. So we need them. Good climate change tree, a uh, good, uh, lovely tree for uh, game. Uh, acorns are widely used by many, many critters, including deer, raccoons, squirrels, all kinds. Anyhow, so that's why we're in here, and while in here, of course, uh, there's probably a couple of more white birch that I will take out as part of payback for the work of getting in here and doing all this. Because <laughs> basically all I took out of this fur was a pile of not-so-great firewood, but that's okay. Uh, the main thing is we're adjusting the woodlot to, to climate change and... Helping things. Mother Nature along. Yes, indeed. All right, so, so let's... What, get, what work are you doing? <laughs> what work am I doing? Well, I'm going to start processing that uh, white birch that's laying down. Uh, he's under a bit of pressure from the way he fell, and so we'll just show how I do it. <laughs> and basically, it's a it's a it's a process that would work for all kinds of people. Even it's basically called weight reduction. <laughs> Are you looking at me? <laughs> I'm looking at me. <laughs> okay, let's have at it. All right.
down the hill. <laughs> and then have to chase after them. <laughs> I've had that happen before. <laughs> Ah, oh, you're still attached to the stump. pressure on that but it still seemed to be going so well and it was opening and then and then it wasn't then it wasn't <laughs> tether saw it so in answer to your wife's question don't you have enough chainsaws the answer is clear no never <laughs> never it's like the song never enough Gonna have them both stuck. <laughs> oh. uh, I could see it. It was just starting to twist a bit, would, but the gap was actually opening up. And I'm watching it open and open, and then I see it start to twist, and I said, "Uh oh!" <laughs> and boom, just like that, it did catch. It tried to eat your saw. And that's another reason why you can't have enough. <laughs> because you could have ended up with two of them stuck. <laughs> Now you can get the first one out. Oh yeah, pretty sure. Yep. Oh yeah, he's gonna fall right out. <laughs> but yeah, where it was, the fork had caught and gone right down that white spruce up there. So I knew there was back pressure coming this way. But knowing it and able to do something about it is not the exact <laughs> same thing. Anyhow, we're. We're good to go now, and the weight and stress is primarily out of that whole crown area, I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, and so the rest should be relatively... <laughs> Straightforward. <laughs> well, you should never say, right? We'll hope.
folks, uh, we're now into talking trees and uh, today's uh, victim, literally and figuratively, is the white spruce. Uh, these are the, this is tips off of white spruce. Quite long needles, the longest needles of the spruce family. And uh, my, my clue for them is if you can see in the lower branches, you can see through the spacing between the needles. And that means it's going to be a white spruce versus a black spruce or a red spruce because they close up very quite tightly. And these are much more open. They also have the largest cones uh, of the spruce family. My, my clue is how bristly they are because the white spruce are the hardest ones on your hands if you're well, not wearing your gloves. <laughs> This is recovering field here. This was once pasture or farmland of some variety. Don't know, of course, anything about the actual history. Uh, so this is this is typical of what you get. Uh, heavy dead branches. Uh, and basically, it's it's just a. Ugly that's, tree. that's the ugly tree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of hate to say that about Mother Nature, but... <laughs> well, they serve a purpose because oh. they are converting that farmland back to forest land, yes. so... And I actually like it was, I think, a webinar, uh, I think it was the University of Wisconsin. And I like their approach. They actually considered basically almost like they're two species of white spruce and the same for red maple. Field spruce dies relatively younger than a white spruce that's grown in a natural forest environment. So field spruce, i.e. white spruce growing in a field, is much shorter lived, ugly, less commercial value, etc, etc, etc. The the forest grown white spruce is actually a reasonably valuable tree. And similarly, they were saying, well, we shouldn't do red maple at this point. <laughs> so, Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> so based on the environment that you're, you're living in, you're either kind of a, a, a junk early succession tree or you're part of an older, more mature forest. Anyhow, uh, this this tree will be coming out in shortly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, shortly, because this white spruce, uh, white birch, the remaining half of the other one I fell, are again wrapped together with each other, and so I can't take one without the other. And again, uh, since we're clearing out trees that have no long-term value to the woodlot here, either for climate change or for commercial purposes. Uh, this is okie dokie. <laughs> You're making room for more oak, in other words. <laughs> well, there's no doubt that... There was no pun intended about the okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually... I've never even thought of it. Okie dokie, yeah, you're right. Oak. Anyway, uh, the, uh, this particular spruce is on its way out, and by the time you see this, it will no doubt be already on the ground. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, he will. Uh, oh, so. Yeah, so too. what about white spruce? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, it's, it's near its southern. Uh, range, the, the extent of its southern range, so basically southern? with climate change, okay. it's not going to do well. So it's uh, going to retreat north. Yes. 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 So it's right up there with fir as a tree that's, that's not slated to do well with climate change. Uh, in good condition, it can live for around 150 years. Field spruce tends to be quite a bit lower than that, uh, seldom not more than a hundred years uh, of age. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, it's, it's a very widely used tree for producing lumber, uh, studwood, uh, two by fours, two by sixes. Uh, basically, in this neck of the woods, uh, our, all our lumber is stamped, I believe, SPF, which is spruce pine fir variety, one or the other. And, uh, you know, field spruce is not a highly desirable saw log because of the big heavy limbs and the huge knots. But once you get a tree that's forest growing, you get eliminate a lot of those issues. Uh, it's, it's got a very nice shape. In fact, uh, Debbie often says, oh, that what a nice shaped Christmas tree. It's probably a spruce. It must be a spruce, and 90% of the time it is. And the other thing... You don't want them for Christmas trees, so. though. Well, there are places, apparently, where they are quite widely used as Christmas trees. Well, My understanding is that if they warm up and so on, they start, start to smell like cat pee. Yes, which is why colloquial is called cat spruce. <laughs> they also dry out faster and like, drop their needles quicker when they're inside. Yeah. Anyhow, so I think that's, a, that's the basics of good old white spruce. Say goodbye to this one, he's on his way out. <laughs>